Historic snowfall across the Rocky Mountains is helping recharge some of the country's biggest reservoirs and provide, briefly, some much-needed breathing room for the oversubscribed Colorado River. Forecasts say the melting snow flowing into Lake Powell via the Colorado River and its tributaries could hit 177% of average this year, a major boost at a time when lake levels had hit historic lows. The levels are now headed up and will likely peak sometime in June, raising the surface by 50 feet. But experts say the boost won't solve or even significantly delay the West's water crisis that has drained the massive Lake Powell and Lake Mead reservoirs. Lake Powell will probably only be about 40% full this fall, far below what it once held. This buys a year, longtime Colorado River expert Brad Udall said. It doesn't remotely come close to solving the long-term problems. Meanwhile, at Lake Powell this week, authorities released billions of gallons of water downstream through the Grand Canyon as part of an attempt to rebuild beaches and create new fish habitats. It's a long-planned experiment that might have been halted if water levels in the reservoir had kept dropping. The Upper Colorado Basin snowpack stands at almost 160% above normal, meaning there's a significant amount of water that will melt and flow downstream into the river. Some of that water will be lost through evaporation or absorption into the dry soils, however. Colorado's snowpack is well above average, and Utah had its snowiest winter on record. This winter's snowpack is promising and provides us the opportunity to help replenish Lakes Mead and Powell in the near term, but the reality is that drought conditions in the Colorado River Basin have been more than two decades in the making, said Bureau of Reclamation Commissioner Camille Kalimlam Tutin in a statement. Water managers hope to refill some of their smaller reservoirs in Colorado and Wyoming, which they have been draining in previous years to prop up Powell and Mead and prevent them from dropping below the levels necessary to produce hydroelectricity. But overall, Colorado River flows have declined about 20% compared to historic flows, even with this year's record-breaking snowfall. 